Hey there, everybody. So I had an idea for a topic today. Uh, we'll just be real quick about it. That's the Lego movie. That movie came out, and my kids were the perfect age. Uh, I wouldn't say it was at the peak of our Lego involvement, but it was definitely at the peak of the collection. And uh, everything was still very fresh. Lots of, lots of great memories already built up of playing Lego together. And we really, we found that movie to be just a real charmer, if you'll, if you'll excuse my use of that word, because it does sound really trite. But that movie was just spot on, really enjoyable, great family entertainment. Yes, we own a copy. And we've watched it many times. Although I do find it funny when I walk into the living room and people are watching the Lego movie on TV when we own it on Blu-ray. Like, I don't know why, why would you watch it with commercials? Uh, so anyway, that's, that's a whole other side thing. But the movie was really, really ingenious. And uh, at the same time, it addressed kind of an issue in the you know, adult fan of Lego community that we all come across. Like I have kids and I had Lego growing up and uh, I have most of those Legos still. And what the issue was is what happens when uh, an AFOL uh, comes across the situation where they've got all, this, all these Legos, which are toys. I mean, they're toys. And their kids want to play with the toys or they want to share the toys. And the kids aren't yet old enough to respect the idea of having, you know, a setup, of having a town, of having things that are, like, built. They want to create all this crazy stuff. And do you allow them to do that? to you know, remake those sets in their own image and their own imagination and stuff like that. And uh, I would give myself probably, if I had to grade myself, I would give myself probably a B on that. And I'm, I'm being a little bit deliberate, deliberately harsh, uh, which I will explain. And the main reason for that is because I, I did have a lot of stuff built up for the town from when I was a kid. And there were definitely a lot of sets. But what I did, though, is I tried to uh, teach the kids that there was definitely value in the sets themselves when it came to, like, having kind of a, a narrative, I guess, kind of having a, a place to play, a place that was, like, set up, that, was, that, that you could do your stories and stuff in. But at the same time, we had tons and tons of extra Legos. And all of the things that I'd kind of built, like, kind of on the side that weren't sets when I was a kid... Most of those were dismantled or taken back apart, and uh, I would, you know, encourage them to use all those pieces to create things to go with, to go kind of hand in hand with the town that was already there. So if you could imagine, there's like a basic framework, like a basic structure of the town, and then they could fit in all these other pieces the way they wanted to. And if they needed to have a plane crash into a building, or a, well, that's a bad example, but if they needed to have like a fire, or they needed, they wanted to do something that was sort of destructive, car crashes, stuff like that. Uh, they could do that. You could take apart the set stuff like that. But, but to do it within reason, we didn't want to have to rebuild the entirety of the town on a regular basis. Uh, this, this sometimes became an issue when friends came over to play and didn't understand how long it took to like put things kind of back into some kind of order. But um, other than that, they, they kind of had free reign. And, and my son's pretty you know organized and right right brain that way, so he he understood that and, and respected those rules <laughs> rules. Uh, my daughter would, uh, when she was smaller, she would sit on the back side of the Lego town while my son and I were building things or, or playing things, and she would she would kind of systematically like disassemble stuff, and very quietly, and then she would just like leave a little pile of Legos where like a cement truck used to be. <laughs> it's very cute, but it's pretty disruptive. So again, I find myself at home and I, I'm kind of in the middle of the story. So so basically, she she would she would take apart all these sets and she would leave little piles everywhere. And she learned that she couldn't do the buildings. She couldn't dismantle the buildings because they would be too obvious. But she would she would take trucks, and um, scenery pieces, and uh, you know cars and, and and stuff like that. And she would kind of just she just very systematically take them apart and pile up all the little pieces, and hope that we didn't notice that she had left little little piles everywhere. I, I swear there's some kind of science fiction movie that's based on that idea of things just kind of being de deconstructed and left in, in ruin. But I can't remember I can't remember the name of it. Um, it's a skyline, something like that. Anyway, so, but so, so they were they kind of had this framework of a town that they could play in or play with, and then they they would they would integrate their own creations into it. 
Uh, we never glued anything down. There were never any, it wasn't really anything that was forbidden. Like, they were all out, allowed to play with all the Lego that I had because everything I had was from when I was a kid. It was all kid stuff. It wasn't like nowadays they have the architecture sets and those modular buildings that are really intricate and probably take hours and hours and hours to put together. I don't have anything like that, never have. So um, everything that we had was simple town stuff, or a few space sets and stuff like that. So they could play with all of that. And so the movie touched on this theme of like, well, what do you do if you have kids and they really want to play with your Lego, but your Lego is like, you know, adult stuff, <laughs> adult Lego. Uh, and in the movie, I'm, not giving anything away at this point. I think everybody's seen it. But in the movie, it's basically the father has forbidden his kids from playing, or his, his son, I guess, specifically, from... Although, no, actually, the daughter's in there, too, because she creates that weird world with the cat and all of that. But he's forbidden them from, from playing with the Lego to the point where it's in a basement and they're not allowed to touch it, uh, except for a couple little scrappy pieces they're allowed to play with. And uh, it's, he's gluing it down so that they won't... They won't like destroy his vast creation, and the kids are uh, the son is is using that he's, he's disobeying and he's doing things on his own in this town, and uh, the father finds out and and that's where there's this whole like realization of like well, do you include kids in your in your adult play with the Lego or not, and and isn't isn't Lego meant to be taken apart and recreated and do things and, and all, of, all of that and, and I think it certainly is. So for those of you who have these kind of sets and you're having kids or going to have kids or your kids now and, and are on the other side of it, um, again I don't say that we did things perfectly. I don't think I was a troll about it or anything like that. I think I tried to create a safe space basically for everybody to play and uh, without, you know, but, but recognize that the, the man hours or the person hours or whatever involved in recreating a town. If you build a town, uh, it does take a number of hours to build that out. And so you, you want to be somewhat controlled in what you do. Like maybe you don't want to have, you know, massive destruction of the town on a daily basis because then you're rebuilding constantly. And, you, and while there's fun in rebuilding things and reimagining and moving things around and changing the way the buildings are, we've certainly changed most of the buildings. There's very few things in our town that are still uh, stock sets. They've all been modified in some way. There, there is a, a limit to where that enjoyment ends and it just becomes tedious of like, ah, now I gotta put this back together again. And um, while the Legos are amazing for that and that they never lose their ability to kind of cling together, it, it does, yeah, it's, it, there's a limit to how much fun it is to, to keep redoing the same thing over and over and over again. So I would encourage the idea of having a basic framework, having a basic, you know, the things that are there and then all the moving parts, all the little, all the other stuff is kind of fair game and you can recreate it and turn it into other things and and all of that uh, so that would be my advice is to come up with some kind of arrangement like that and um, yeah so I, th I think that that was fairly and I think I was pretty good about that I don't I don't remember there being any major issues uh, except like I said we had a couple times when friends would come over and they would play <laughs> and I would go up afterward and I'm like oh my gosh what happened up here and my son didn't know how to put things together um, you know, because some of the instructions were very old and I, I had them in a different place because I was trying to protect the actual paper. And then we ended up finding Piron uh, website, which has all the directions digitally. So we archived, I have archived all of that now digitally so we can find them again. Uh, the, the, one, the one exception I would make was uh, when we created a new building and we really liked that building, uh, whether it was at, like the hotel that I made for him or the TV station or some of these other sets that I sort of created or the buses, uh, we would generally decide, yeah, we do like this. We want to be able to remake this and, and not lose it like forever if something happens. Uh, we would take photographs of all the steps of how to build it and kind of make our own instruction book so that we could recreate that as a set if the need ever arose, ever, ever, ever was arisen or came back or whatever. If the need ever was there to, to, to rebuild it, it wouldn't be like, well, gee, now how, how do we do that again? Because I don't, I don't remember. I got this pile of pieces that my daughter just dismantled this thing, but how do I put it back together? So we did make our own instructions for those things. And, and there was sort of a rule that if we came up with a creation, uh, whether he did it or I did it or we did it together or she did it, eh, let me, I didn't play with them too much. It was kind of off limits from anything, nothing bad could happen to that thing until we had instructions for it so that we knew how to recreate it. Once we knew how to recreate it, all right, 
now you can hit it with a boat or <laughs> earthquake can swallow it or whatever there was. Uh, I will say one of the other unplanned unplanned destructions that we would have is my wife would occasionally she doesn't she, she's given up now she doesn't she doesn't bother but my wife would occasionally decide that she needed to clean the dust off the Lego because of course Lego attracts dust like you would not believe especially when it's in a town set up like that I think when you're playing with them in a bag or a box they tumble around and the dust falls off when they're actually built kind of established all that infrastructure uh, collects dust like crazy so she would go up there and she would try and dust it with the vacuum cleaner and 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 whatnot, and um, getting getting down into the streets with a vacuum cleaner, sort of like some kind of crazy uh, monster attacking the city, and we would find the town all wrecked and whatnot. And if you look other places on the channel, you'll find things like um, Lego Town hit by a tsunami, or uh, Lego Towns recovering from a hurricane, or something like that. What that really was was a vacuum cleaner going through the town and knocking down all the all the little things, because that's basically what a storm does. Right, is it, it displaces all the cars, it knocks a few buildings around a little bit, breaks a few windows, knocks down some trees and all that, and that's basically what the vacuum would do. And every time she cleaned it, I swear, it was days worth of work to try and get everything kind of put back, all the, all the street signs and the bus stops and all that kind of stuff. Uh, so we decided on a couple of those occasions that we would make a video of it, and we would make that something that we played with. So we would be like, all right. Well, let's scrounge up some rescue crews, let's scrounge up some firefighters and things like that, and let's go through these buildings and see if we can find the survivors, and, and, uh, and we call out the construction crews to try and fix things and put out traffic cones to go around the debris, and it kind of became its own, like, we kind of played with the destruction, I guess you could say. Since the town was already destroyed, well, we might as well take that as part of, like, the narrative, and we would play with it that way until we build it back. And uh, that was actually a lot of fun, I have to say. And there's some, some good lessons there, I think, for the kids about, you know, well, how do you prioritize? You know, let's say a storm hits Pittsburgh, which is where we live, and you really do have to rebuild the town. Well, what would, what would come first? Would it be power? Would it be water? Would you search for survivors? Or are you going to clear the roads? Like, uh, some very practical things that they learned from that, uh, I hope. It's about prioritizing things. So, um, anyway. So, Lego Movie was awesome, but that was the issue that kind of came up, and, and I thought... You know, I don't see that really addressed anywhere, and I'm, I don't have any great, you know, psychological analysis of it. But I think what we did uh, with my kids growing up is is a good idea for other people to consider. Uh, so there you go. Everybody have fun out there. Play with your Legos. Enjoy them. Enjoy them. They're wonderful, fabulous toys, and they're tools for learning. And uh, play with them with your kids. Absolutely. And uh, subscribe whichever side I decide to put the thing on. Subscribe and uh, go back and you'll find some of those other videos on there that I'm talking about and uh, maybe make some more of your own. Thanks for watching, everybody. See ya.